So which controller would I recommend? What's going on everyone? It's your boy Cedric. Welcome back to Sweet Scale TV. So to start the year, I shared with you my favorite effects. VSTs. Sweet scale, sweet scale. And in today's episode, I'm going to share with you the best MIDI controllers in 2021. Now I got three of the five MIDI controllers in studio, so we're going to check those out. But before we get started, I got to thank the producer community for showing so much love and support. You got to appreciate every single milestone, and I really do. When you're first starting a channel, it just seems so unrealistic, but you guys show so much support and so much love. So thank you so very much. And if you haven't already joined the Sweet Scale family, we still got room for you. Hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. All right, so there are four key factors I consider before picking up a MIDI controller. Number one is price. Number two, how the keys or notes feel. Number three, how the MIDI controller integrates with my DAW. In this case, I'm using Ableton, but these MIDI controllers integrate with Logic Pro, FL Studio, Cubase, pretty much every major DAW. Last but not least, the software that comes with the MIDI controller. We're starting off with the Archery Keylab 49. I've had this MIDI controller for about a year. This retails for 629. The Keylab 61 retails for 699. I went with a smaller keyboard. This was the first time I went with 49 keys as opposed to 61. The keys feel very good. And integrating the Archery Keylab 49 with Ableton is amazing. I can easily switch over to user and use the drum pad. I love the fact that the Keylab 49 comes with eight channels as well as a master channel. If I'm in the session view, I can scroll through different scenes. I can also click on view and now I'm in an arrangement view. You can also activate and deactivate the metronome. You can easily solo a channel, arm and disarm automation, as well as you have an undo button. The knobs on top of the faders control the panning. The pitch wheel is really stiff in a good way and the mod wheel feels great. I love the fact that these are metal. I really, really enjoy this keyboard. And if you're big into Archeria VSTs, you're gonna love the integration that you can do with the Keylab 49. Another great factor for such a powerful keyboard is you only need a USB connection to power up this controller. Not only do you get an amazing keyboard, but you also get Piano V, Ableton Light, as well as Analog Lab. Another great factor about this MIDI controller is you have the option to get it in either black or white. Now there are just a few cons. The pads aren't the greatest pads. If you're using this controller for drum pads, you really got to hit these drum pads. That's not a big deal for me because I use the push two. But if you don't use the push two, that's something you're going to want to consider. And number two, the keys feel very good. But they don't feel great. The keys are fairly loud. You know, even just pushing down slightly. If you're a keyboardist that loves to go up and down, play solos, that's something you're gonna wanna consider. I don't wanna sound too picky, but again, it's a minor thing. It might be just my preference. I probably wouldn't have gotten another keyboard if I had gotten 61 keys. The pros drastically outweigh the cons. There's so many great things about the Archeria Keylab, whether you're using the 49 or 61 keys. Up next, we got the Novation SL61 MK3. This keyboard is Fairly new to me, I've had this for, I wanna say six months. Retails for about $900. As I mentioned before, I really like the Archeria Keylab 49. There was a couple of reasons why I bought this controller. Number one, I needed the extra octave. 49 keys wasn't cutting it anymore. And number two, although the Archeria Keylab 49 is semi-weighted, I didn't feel like it was a true semi-weight. This integrates extremely well with Ableton, but you're also able to hook up hardware synths. Now, I'm really not about that life, but if you are, I would highly recommend the SL MK3. You can easily navigate from channel to channel by using the buttons above the drum pad, or you can use the track buttons. I really love the drum pad setup because it's easier for working on a live performance or when you're working in the arrangement view. Now, in the arrangement view, you can use the fast forward or rewind buttons. Of course you have your stop, play, record, and this button right here would turn on your loops. Pitch and mod wheel also feel amazing. Now a couple of really cool features I like are your scales mode. So if I go over to scales, right now I have it set at C major, but you have all these different scale modes you can choose from. So we got the natural minor. I have snap mode turned on, so I can play anything and stay in the natural minor scale. Another really cool feature is the sequencer mode. So let's say you're not really a keyboardist or let's say you are, but you don't wanna play keys for some reason. What the sequencer mode allows you to do is play chords and save those chords 
in a specific sequencer slot. Now the great thing is you don't have to play the chord all at once. As long as I'm holding down on that specific sequence, I can keep adding notes. So let's say I'm playing in C major, or let's try C sharp major. So I'm gonna go. But let's say I wanna add to that, I can do. So that is one sequence. adding to the sequence and I played a wrong note, I can just hold down on the sequence and get rid of that wrong note. So in just a few minutes I came up with a chord progression. So now I no longer have to play the keys. The drum pads on the SL MK3 feel absolutely amazing. You don't need to push too hard on them. They are really sensitive. It has eight faders as opposed to nine faders. I really, really love this keyboard. Again, I mainly got it because it feels good. Now, when it comes to software, all you get with the SL MK3 is Ableton Lite. I think this keyboard would be perfect if it had a master knob, kind of like the Keylab 49 or a Native Instruments S61. A master fader, fortunately this doesn't have a master fader so I MIDI controlled the last channel to control my master channel. I also wish it had an undo and redo button and a view button so you can go back and forth between the session view and arrangement view. If it had those four features, it would be perfect. Now, before I start talking about the Complete Control S61, I gotta give a huge shout out to Native Instruments for hooking me up with this keyboard. Really, really appreciate it. I'm excited to use it and I'm excited to talk about it. The keys feel absolutely amazing. Yeah, they feel great. Using this controller in Ableton, you can control the faders. Now, if you're watching it off the screen, you'll notice it jumps up and down, but when you're watching it off of Ableton, it's not as bad. To scroll through different channels, you would use the master knob and just go up and down. To go from scene to scene, you would push the knob from left to right. Another factor I love is the fixed velocity. You've got your play, stop, record, metronome, loop, tap tempo. You also have an undo and redo button. So you can definitely get the basics done in Ableton. However, I love using the S61 with complete control. To go from the mixer to complete control, you'd hit plug in and let's bring in an instrument. Once you open up complete control, you really don't need a mouse or keyboard. You can do everything with this MIDI controller. Once you're in the browser mode, you can go through all the instruments from native instruments, but you can also use third party instruments, meaning plugins that are not from native instruments like Archuria, auto modeling, output, Yuhi, and Waves. So let's go over to Yuhi. Now I got Yuhi selected and I can either go through Diva, Hive, Repo, Repo 5, or Zebra 2. Let's go with Diva. I can double click and bring Diva in and I'm gonna go browse through Diva. I'm gonna look for a synth lead and I'm gonna go with the soft synth lead. I like that, so let's load that. Now I can control Diva by just using the S61. Say I don't like this instrument, I can always go back and choose a different plugin. Now that I'm using complete control, I can use a scale mode and I'm using the major scale, but we can always go with the minor scale. Key mode is mapped, so it doesn't matter what I play, I'm gonna play a minor scale. I can go with the arpeggio mode, we can control the rhythm if it goes up or down. And again, I can just go right back to the plugin and we can add an effect. So if I want to add the CLA 76, hit enter. Now I can control the CLA 76 with the knobs on the MIDI controller. This is my first time scrolling through Native Instruments just using the controller and I found myself getting more and more comfortable and that only took 10-15 minutes and I've only scrolled through with complete control with a controller today as I'm shooting this episode. I thought it would be a lot more complicated. It's really simple. Now the S61 comes with complete select. There's a lot that this keyboard comes with. If you pick up the S61, you might wanna try your hand at machine. I used to use machine 
every single weekend when I used to perform. I mainly used it for drum loops, but you can use Machine for creating an entire beat. And the workflow with Machine and the S61 would be absolutely amazing. Now, if you're looking for the basic starter MIDI controller, I would consider the M Audio 49 or 61 fourth generation MIDI controller. It does come with drum pads as well as Ableton Light. Now, the keys aren't the greatest, but they are velocity sensitive. It is half the price of the Keylab 49, and it's a third of the price of the Novation and Native Instruments MIDI controller. Another MIDI controller to check out is the Akai MPK61. Now, I don't know much about this, but I do have some friends that have this controller and they swear by it, they love it. It also comes with Ableton Lite as well as some software. The keys are semi-weighted. My producer friends swear by it. They say it's amazing. So I'd recommend you do some research on that controller to see if it's the right fit for you. So which controller would I recommend? It all depends on what you're looking at doing. If you're a huge Arturia fan, you love the Arturia instruments, you might want to go with the Keylab 49 or the Keylab 61. If you're into live performances, I would consider the Arturia Keylab 49 or Novations SL MK3. If you're looking for really good controls, but you also want some software, I would recommend either the Keylab 49 or the S61 because not only are they really good controllers, but they come with software from Arturia and Native Instruments. If the way the keys and notes feel is extremely important, I would consider either the SL MK3 from Novation or Native Instruments S61. If you need drum pads, you're gonna find drum pads on the SL MK3 or the Keylab 49 or 61. And if you're a huge Native Instruments fan, you're gonna wanna consider the S61. So which MIDI controller are you considering picking up? Drop a comment below. Got a lot of content coming your way. Once again, 25K, really appreciate it. On the way to 30K. If you haven't already joined the Sweet Scale family, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification. It's your boy Cedric from Sweet Scale TV, signing out. I'll see you in the next episode.